Invisible is an open source secrets management platform. It helps developers manage their secrets across their infrastructure, across their engineering teams, and so on. So by secrets, we really mean any type of secret. So whether it's an API key or a database access token, or maybe it's a dynamically generated secret or a rotated secret on a certain schedule or a certificate, really, you know, any type of sensitive data. By infrastructure, we mean any type of infrastructure. So whether you have an on-premises use case or your infrastructure is multi-cloud or you're running in Kubernetes, or maybe you need to manage secrets in your CI CD pipelines with Jenkins, or you have an infrastructure as code use case, it really doesn't matter because in physical is fully universal and it can help you manage secrets in any of these environments. So if we go directly into the Invisical dashboard, you can see here right now we are inside of the organization called Acme. Inside of the organization called Acme, we are part of the project called Server. Um, every project in Invisical actually has a set of environments, um, as you're able to see here. So in this project, we have development, staging, and four different production environments. We have production core, production US, production EU, and production Australia. So uh, these environments are actually highly configurable and you can decide yourself, you know, depending on your infrastructure, how you actually want these to work. Um, you can edit the secrets directly from the screen. Um, you know, if you click on a secret here, uh, you can either reveal the values and you can edit them right uh, afterwards. Um, but otherwise, the screen is more of a bird's eye view, uh, you know, for an admin user to actually see how different environments compare with each other. Is anything missing? Uh, perhaps some values are empty and they need to be specified and so on. Uh, if you want to go have a deeper look, you can go in particular, right now we're inside of the development environment. Um, and you can see here, you know, ultimately uh, it's a set of key value pairs. Um, you can see here, uh, email SMTP has a value called test. Uh, by default, it's just you know, a normal string, but it can really be anything. It can be a multi-line secret, it can be a JSON secret, it can be a certificate. Um, it really doesn't matter, and in physical, it'll pick up the right file format as you need it to be. Um, and on top of that, there is lots of other features that are embedded uh, as part of the secrets. So you can see here, um, in we have a secret called DB URL. Uh, it's actually, uh, you can see that it references other secrets such as database username and database password. These uh, secrets actually come directly uh, from here. So you can see uh, that every time we update the value of database username, every time we update the value of database password, these values will be propagated to every reference of the secret. So it really helps us establish the central source of truth uh, for these secrets and, and make sure um, that uh, the time developers spend on updating different changes is absolutely minimized. And this also works cross environments, but um, you know, for the simplicity of the use case, um, we are doing it within the environment right now. And so there is lots of other things that you can do in here. Every secret can be tagged. So especially we have hundreds or thousands of secrets that can be very helpful. Uh, every secret could have a comment, kind of like a metadata for every secret. Um, in addition to that, every secret is also version controlled. So every time we do a change, um, it's, you know, it's everything is being tracked. Um, we can also go deeper uh, into how it's managed with audit logs. Uh, but otherwise, version controls also integrates into another feature that we call point in time recovery. Uh, and what it allows you to do is every time you make a change to your secrets, there is actually a snapshot uh, that is being taken. And every time, um, you know, uh, you can, if, for each of these snapshots, you can go back uh, in time and uh, view the changes as they happened. And in case you made a mistake, you can roll back with just a single button. Uh, so, you know, everything that I'm showing you right now is based on the UI, but obviously secret management is very much an ops task. So everything uh, here is also possible to do through API. Uh, and there's lots of other uh, automated ways to actually manage uh, your own physical instance, whether it's through CLI or through the Terraform provider um, and so on. So you can read a bit more about it in our documentation. Um, and um, yeah, so there is lots of other things that you can actually do here. By default, the secrets structure is very flat. You know, it's just a set of key value pairs. Uh, but really, uh, another thing to consider is that there is a concept of folders. Uh, so you can actually structure your secrets into uh, folders. These folders can be infinitely nested. So you can really create any structure uh, with your secrets that you want to have. 
Um, and your secrets can also be of multiple types, as I already said, right? So here we actually see a dynamic secret. So this secret is gonna be generated for every identity that's actually accessing it. So if there are two applications that actually have access to this dynamic secret, they will actually have different versions of that secret um, that are available to them, and they only have a very specific short time to lift, and after that they're being rotated or renewed. Uh, I mean, you know, there are different considerations here. Um, but you can connect it, for example, to your to your databases. This is an SQL uh, database example. And so there is lots of different uh, secret types that you can also go take a look at our docs um, and how these work in particular. Um, in addition to that, um, one last thing that I'm going to show on the dashboard is, uh, you know, you see we have four different production environments. Uh, they are actually separated by different regions. So uh, what's very common actually is that these production environments will be largely similar uh, to one another uh, with some secrets, but certain secrets will be different. It'll be unique for these particular uh, regional environments. So what we can do within physical is you can actually import uh, the environments from production core. And so production US environment that we are currently in is actually going to depend directly uh, on uh, production core. And it's only going to override secrets that are unique uh, to production US. And, and similarly, uh, the same way goes for production Asia and production EU. Um, yeah, uh, that's it for the dashboard. Again, everything that you see here is also available through API. So everything is um, available in a programmatic uh, fashion as well. Um, on top of that, obviously, uh, everything you have in physical is incredibly sensitive, uh, right? All the secret data, um, everything has to be access controlled. So there are quite a few ways in physical for how you can actually <clears throat> manage that. So a key concept to understand in physical is a concept of an identity. So an identity could be either a human, uh, as we can see here, uh, or it could also be a machine. So a machine identity is similar to you know, a service account or an IAM user that has access to a particular secret and it's helping you operate secrets into a particular environments such as your CICD pipelines or your production environments. And each of these um, users uh, such as humans or uh, machine identities, they could first of all have uh, a number of different roles. Um, they should have at least one, but you can assign more roles to them. So for example, we can give this um, machine identity an admin access uh, for the next one hour. So your roles that you assign, they could be either permanent or they could be just in time, uh, also known as temporary roles. And similar uh, situation goes for uh, additional privileges. You know, sometimes it's not enough actually to assign a role to, to someone, right? Or you want to extend this role by this specific uh, privilege. So you can assign someone a production core uh, privilege with create access, uh, let's say also for the next one hour, um, and you'll be able to grant that as well. So it's highly configurable. It integrates with Active Directory, uh, lots of other uh, kind of like identity providers. Um, so uh, no matter how you actually want to set it up or if you need some kind of like a user group concept situation uh, with your Active Directory, uh, you can integrate that and um, InPhysical supports that. Uh, obviously, every action in physical is audit logged. So right now we can see here, uh, you know, what the user is actually making. This goes both for human users, but also machine users. Um, and you can see, you know, all the information regarding their IP addresses, metadata and so on. Uh, on top of that, developers are actually able to, first of all, uh, request changes to secrets directly from in physical. So imagine I'm a developer, I need access to a new project or I need access to a particular environment for the next two hours. I can actually request it directly from in physical. Um, and then the admin will be notified through the right channel that's specified ahead uh, in advance, depending on the policy that's, that's created. Uh, and they'll be able to either approve or deny my access request, um, after which uh, the access will be granted to me. Uh, and then revoked after you know, a certain period of time, if such a period of time is specified. Uh, on top of that, um, you also have a similar concept to pull requests or merge requests, where you know, instead of actually merging secrets directly to the production environment, you probably want someone to take a look at it first 
and um, you know, approve if the change actually makes sense, whether it's an edit change or you're adding a new secret or perhaps you're removing a secret, which is even more dangerous. Uh, these changes, you know, again, depending on the policy that you have set up, the admin will be able to either approve it or reject it. And only afterwards, they will be propagated to your uh, environment. And, you know, depending on what integrations you have set up further on, they will be propagated to your, for example, a Kubernetes production cluster uh, and so on. So uh, there's lots of other things, uh, but for the sake of time, I'm going to talk a little more about integrations. Uh, so here you can see, um, uh, first of all, in physical supports, a list of native integrations uh, with different, uh, whether cloud providers or CI CD providers or, um, you know, you name it, any developer and infrastructure tools. Um, so these are either one directional or bi-directional integrations that allow you to have in physical as a central source of truth. And every time you, you or your developers change something in physical, the changes will actually be propagated to any uh, of these destinations. So in physical becomes a central source of truth and your secrets are always in sync um, and you never have discrepancies between each of these um, environments. Uh, on top of that, uh, there is a number of other uh, use cases for <clears throat> in physical. So how we view secrets management is we view it in a few different buckets. So first of all, we have uh, local development. So local development has a number of different considerations around how do you actually get secrets onto developers' uh, local machines. Uh, securely. Obviously, local set of secrets is not a sensitive, but still, we, we want to have these security considerations um, in mind. Uh, so how do you facilitate developer onboarding? How does it get as quickly as possible? After the application uh, is exited, how do we make sure that none of the secrets stay on local machines anymore? How do we make sure that different developers actually have the right set of secrets, um, you know, and, and they are not unsynced, uh, which happens with, you know, um, different organizations who are using .env files, for example, and so on. The second bucket is CI, CD, uh, QA, testing use cases. Uh, you know, these are pretty sensitive secrets, but not yet production. Uh, there's lots of considerations <clears throat> around efficiency. How do we manage our secrets in Jenkins or Ansible or Terraform? How do we make sure that it's very, very uh, simple for developers to actually do anything there, but at the same time, it's secure and we know what's happening at every step. Every step is audit locked and so on. And the last step is, you know, our production um, uh, secret management, whether you're using Kubernetes or you're perhaps uh, using some uh, multi-cloud use cases or even just a single cloud. Um, you know, this is something that Infysical is able to help you with. So, uh, you can see here, uh, you know, there's a number of different frameworks. These are all for local development. Um, you can uh, read more inside of our documentation. So you can, for example, see how to use in physical CLI to, um, you know, start up your React projects. Um, and uh, yeah, it really supports lots of different frameworks, maybe using Java with Spring Boot or whatever it is. Uh, and physical is able to support that. Uh, on the CI CD side of things, same thing. So. For example, we have our own and physical Jenkins plugin. You are able to integrate with GitHub Actions. There is a number of different ways to do that. We have our custom GitHub Action. We have a native integration with GitHub as well, um, and so on. And on the production side, uh, there is also quite a few ways to actually integrate it. So no matter what platform you're using, we are able to integrate with tools like AWS Parameter Store. We are able to integrate directly with uh, your Kubernetes clusters. Our Kubernetes operator actually provides a way for you to automatically redeploy your uh, applications after the secrets are changed in your physical instance. And there's lots of lots of nice workflows um, that make developers' life much, much simpler. Um, and uh, yeah, you just need to read the docs to find out uh, some of them, but we try to make um, these as easy and as obvious as possible uh, to, to really make it easy for developers to actually set things up. Uh, and yeah, uh, so lots of different ways to actually uh, you know manage secrets. You can find lots of different guides within uh, the physical documentation. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us. Uh, please, you can either email support at infysical.com or you can join our community Slack channel where our team is constantly monitoring questions um, and we are trying to answer them live. Um, and um, yeah, the Slack channel is available through infysical.com slash Slack. 
Um, and uh, yes, please, if you have any questions, uh, if you want to try out InPhysical, you can just go to InPhysical.com. Uh, and uh, we're happy uh, to have you using InPhysical, and hopefully we can help you manage secrets uh, easier and more securely. Have a good day.